Krav Maga. It's considered by many to be the most effective form of self-defense. I've got a masher. We're talking holiday meals. You're thinking mashed potatoes, right? Wrong. Wrong? Wrong, not mashed potatoes. Mashed it's what? actually roasted garlic cauliflower mash. And one of the highlights this year is fitness guru Billy Blanks. He joins us now. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank nice. You. To, ow! Oh, come, come on. Take it easy. Well, music can be healing. That's been the finding of studies for years. And now music is being used to treat Alzheimer's patients. As correspondent Dr. John LaPook shows us, the results are pretty incredible. Okay, so today we're going outside. Paul, as you know, with the drought, a lot of people are ripping out their yards and, and putting more, you know, tolerant. They want to save money. That's right. And you know what's great about that money you save is then you can put it into another $500 project. I love it. Right? Forget about any notion you may have had about what an addict looks like. They're teachers, lawyers, even doctors. And for most of them, the only treatment center that's going to work doesn't look like a hospital. It looks like a home. I can't remember the last time I did a, uh, You're, a push. You were just getting I'm, ready and you're winded. I, I'm winded by just thinking about it, but um, here we go, we okay? We can do this. Let's yep. do it. Ready? Okay. We got makeup Gwen in the room with us here. Here we go. Wait. No, no, no. We're not going yet. Okay. You okay. tell me when. On okay. three. Ready? Wait. Okay. One, two, three. Go. One. One, two. two. Oh, my gosh. Three, three four, four, five. Why are you guys going so six. fast? It was a little known fact and one that's always met with surprise when people find out I can't swim. Did you have any experience in your past that might have been traumatic? Well, uh, when I was in five, water? I was in a, an apartment pool full of people and I was on a raft, floated in the deep end and then flipped over, went under and no one saw me. Uh, Pat and Rick, there used to be this notion that a hard bed and a cold meal was the way to get someone out of their addiction, but today experts say the longer addicts stay in treatment, the more likely they'll get and stay sober. At a center called Promises in Malibu, the approach is to put a cold hard addict into a warm cozy home. All right, so, so we're going to show, you, you, show you some first <laughs> thing, you know, some things are going to be like this, what we call a butterfly. You can even try this. Oh, oh I can't. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I'm wearing it. heels. Right, I just want to warn right you. Here. They'd be okay. simple things. Something simple. Good okay. for your shoulders. Place your hands like this. Uh -huh. So all you're going to do is take your left leg and you're going to pull it over like that. Okay. And then you're going to bring it back together. Okay. So you work your shoulders, work your abs, and your legs. So okay. you're going to go like this. One, One. two, oh, just same three. Leg. That's it. Go. Okay. One, two, go. Okay. Three. That's okay. it. Four, five. Look at you. Six, yeah. seven, Hey, this stuff works. Eight. One more. One. Count it. Seriously. Two. Three, three. Go. Oh, and we count at the same go. time. Five. That's that it. takes Six, concentration. Seven, right. Eight. And good. So. Now let's try the other side. <laughs> and, that, and that's good for the side of your legs, good uh -huh. for your inner thigh, good for your shoulders. Uh -huh. Then we'll show you another one, oh. which is which we're gonna use some dumbbells, right? So I'll give one to Andrea. And I'll give one to you. Oh good, thanks for giving me And I'll take one. one. Okay, okay. the simple exercise we do in the knockout workout. Uh -huh. Put your elbow up like this. So we're gonna work your triceps. You're gonna go out like that uh -huh. and you'll come back, right? Okay. So as you go out. You want to work on your tricep muscle oh. and your deltoid muscle. You yeah, say, yeah, keep the right. elbow up. Right, just like that. And we'll you do know, like when they asked me to fill in the noon today, they did not tell me I would be doing this much work. I've got to last until 10 p.m. tonight. But that's good for you. So okay. now you're okay. working, you're getting your workout in, right? You're going to give me more energy by so doing this, right? Now go like this. Do a cardio set. You're okay. going to go one, two, three. And all you do is watch your extension. Oh, feel I that in watch your shoulders it. and your triceps, right? Oh my gosh, that's like a muscle right Good there. job. Now go to the other side. So but, you even it up. Oh, okay. Ready? Go. Yeah. One. Two, go. Ooh. That's it. The more you keep that elbow up, up. the more you mm -hmm. work your triceps and your deltoid. Good. Look at so these ladies smiling when they're doing this. Yeah, they used to do it all the time. Andrea teaches and not, Natasha teaches at my studio. Oh, great. So they... Krav Maga. It's considered by many to be the most effective form of self-defense. Developed in the 1930s as a means of defending the Jewish quarter against fascist groups, it's now the official self-defense system of the Israeli Armed Forces. Go! And it's taught to members of the military and law enforcement around the world, including the FBI and U.S. Secret Service. But can someone with no experience get proficient in just three months? You want to go to vital organs. There's the liver, there's the spleen, there's the solar plexus. My answer would have been no after my first class. No! It was an intense, heart-pounding, lung-searing workout that had me breathless 
just halfway through the warm-up. Fast, 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 fast! The level one class taught me basics of punching and kicking, and it really tested my endurance. My favorite exercise was this. Attack! A free-for-all. Run around until someone attacks you and fight back. By the end of class one, I was hooked. Rule number one, if someone demands your money or car, give it to them. It's when they attack or attempt to move you to another location that you should fight back. Rule number two, there's no such thing as fighting dirty. You could strike to the grind, you could punch to the throat, you could poke in the eyes, you could hit behind that. A lot of our strikes are illegal in legal fighting. So for three months, I trained at least twice a week. Keeping a video diary helped me see where I needed more work. I did lots of conditioning work with focus mitts and tie pads. Hands up. It was tiring but fun, and I could feel myself getting stronger. Don't get me wrong, there were a lot of bumps and bruises along the way, but I wore them like badges. Actually, for the amount of time she's been training, she's advancing faster than most of our students. Good, good strikes. And in that short time, we covered a lot of defenses to different attacks. Bear hug from behind, choke up against a wall, and defenses against an armed attacker, a gun to my back, or a knife to my throat, just to name a few. We try to keep it simple. You don't want to think in a fight, you want to react. So the moves are actually easy to learn and remember because they're instinctual. Push up my neck, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? It doesn't move my body. Push up high. Right, okay. That, that worked, okay. right? All right, good. let's do it again. I worked with guys bigger and stronger than me, and later in my training, uh, Burton one, makes one. it a bit harder. Uh, Shh, good. I'm gonna stress you out. Three. Shh, good. Three minutes feels like three hours, but it conditions me for this: multiple attackers, three men, any number of different attacks, and I have to use what I've learned to break free. It's something they threw at me on the day of taping, and nothing I've done before. It is by far the hardest, most stressful thing I've had to do. I want to give up, but somewhere deep inside of me, I find the fight to keep going. And that, in a real life situation, could mean the difference between life and death. That was great, seriously. <laughs> It was a little known fact and one that's always met with surprise when people find out I can't swim. Did you have any experience in your past that might have been traumatic? Well, uh, when I was five, I was in a, an apartment pool full of people and I was on a raft, floated in the deep end and then flipped over, went under and no one saw me. To this day, I can still remember what it looked like. I swallowed a lot of water and it was a really scary experience. I mean, I can still, just talking about it now, I can still, you know, feel how helpless How old I felt. were you when that five. happened? You were five. Yeah. Over the years, a lot of people tried to teach me but failed. My dad, friends, boyfriends, even the one who was in the Coast Guard. <laughs> but with two kids who loved to swim and a pool in our backyard, it was time to learn for their sake. So I sought out the water whisperer, Emily Cohen. Swimming shouldn't just be about, you know, panicking and saving people in emergencies. There's also a joy to it, a relaxing part of it, a component that feels very therapeutic. One, two, three. The first step seems simple enough. Emily pours water over my head. I actually hated it and thought, this is a mistake. Okay. I'm going to turn off my nose. Step two, learning the different ways to hold my breath and blow bubbles underwater. You're going to take a deep breath. <gasps> You're not going to release it. You're only going to blow bubbles out of your nose. She demonstrates that it's my turn. Okay. One, two, three, deep breath. <gasps> Close your mouth. Good, now blow. Blow. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. I'm going to lower you a little bit. Good, keep blowing. Excellent. It was uncomfortable in the beginning, so I did it several times. Okay, one, two, three, deep breath. <gasps> okay, look down and blow. I love it. The whole head's under the water. Blow and kick. Good. Blow and kick. Very blow good and kick. Job. Perfect. Okay, now when was the last time you ever had your entire face submerged? Never. <laughs> Never? <laughs> At this point, I'm thinking, okay, baby steps. Maybe a week of this, and I might be able to swim. Next step, learning to paddle by making spoons with my hands. And you're going to try to take your arms up and out of the water while you reach, reach, reach. They use a noodle under me to help me stay afloat. Okay, one, two, three, deep breath. Okay, look down. Paddle, paddle and kick. Paddle and kick. Paddle and kick. Paddle and kick. Yeah. <laughs> After a second time with the doodle, I'm confident enough to try it without. One, two, three, deep breath. <gasps> Look all the way down. Get your head Look warm down. Up. Down. Look down. Look down. Look down. Yes. Good. 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 She's doing it. Good. Good. You're swimming. The She's swimming. In less than 20 minutes in the water, I was swimming. 
the decades of embarrassment washed away with each stroke and kick. <gasps> In fact, it went so well, Emily had me go to the bottom of the pool to pick up objects. This is the beginning step leading up to possibly being able to go down and rescue a person or an animal. And like all good things learned later in life, I asked myself, why didn't I do this sooner? Although Lena learned in one lesson, the water whisperer recommends an intensive 10 days and two weeks to become proficient. And we have more information on the water whisperer swim school on CBSLA.com, under scene on TV, and bravo to our Lena Wynn.